Hey, how's it going? It's Grant with the Garden of Eater. And in this video, we're going to do an entire setup and review of the Aqua L Shrimp Set 30 complete shrimp tank kit. It's got the light, lid, filter, and of course the aquarium. We've already slapped together the aquascape and got it cycled. So let's dive in and figure out how we got to here. All right, so we got the Shrimp Set 30 here in the box still. It's the Shrimp Set 30 because it's 30 liters, almost 8 gallons. It's like 7.93 gallons, so almost 8 gallons. But it's got some great filtration and a nice light included as well. Get everything out of the box. We've got the light. We've got the pump. I believe this is a heater, which we are not going to use. And then some clips. And then unlike the other box, I can take this one out easy enough. Almost easy enough, struggling. All right, so with this tank, there isn't a mat. It does come with these clips and a little bit of sticky tape. So we're gonna put the sticky tape onto the clips and then the clips will go underneath the aquariums. Oh. And it is double-sided, so you gotta peel it off both sides. And so we got the first clip on, let's get the second clip. You want to make sure you never lay a rimless aquarium down flat onto any surface because if there's even one little tiny piece of sand, gravel, anything like that, it can crack the aquarium. All right, so the tank is done on the mounts. And now it can go on a flat surface. All right, let's get the light on. It does come with one of the uh, lids that we've had in one of our other videos where it does sit on its own, so. Put that to the side, so that's all done. The light has a little film protectment on it. Just clips on on the back like that. And then we've got the filter. We want the filter to go in place before we scape the aquarium. So that way we know it has plenty of room. All right, so we got the back of the filter all put together, the suction cups, and then the actual guard on the back just slides into the back of the filter. So then once you got the filter all put together, it hangs on the back of the aquarium and then suction cups to the back to keep it all nice and stable. Really nice compact filter. And then we've got the rest of the aquarium to scape with. So now that the aquarium is unboxed, I took the exact measurements of the space inside the aquarium and then cut that out to a cardboard box. So that way I had an exact template to build my hardscape. So that way it wasn't too big and it was gonna fit exactly inside the aquarium. The substrate we decided to go with this aquarium is the Rio Cafe Extra Fine Florin Volcanic from Brightwell Aquatics. 
We went with the brown this time instead of the black because of the dragon stone and the dragon wood. It just matches it all a lot nicer and is gonna go with the scape a little bit better. Now I've added a good amount of substrate here and I've started to slope it because I've already got plans to make a little tiny cave way back in the bottom of the aquascape and it's gonna have a little tiny window in the way back so that way light can shine through for a cool little effect. So I've got the sloping motion already going on and then I'm starting to add in my dragon stone. I have the perfect little tiny cave style piece for the back of the aquarium that the whole light will shine through and then the rest of the dragon stone is kind of just being thrown in the back to try and fill in the gaps because it's not the main actual layout of the aquascape it's just kind of the background and it's not really going to be seen too much and then i kind of got busy a lot of times when we're filming and whatnot i forget to actually pull out the camera and i kind of got a little far here and we got some of the wood in place starting to glue it back together and then a lot of the detail work for the dragon stone is already finished just simply because as i added on more of the wood it was going to be impossible to scape the finer details now the key to the rest of the scape was patience as long as i waited for the glue to fully dry i could move on to the next piece and not have to worry about the whole tank collapsing on me now since everything is nice and stable with all the substrate and dragonstone at the base. However, I did have to get a little creative and find some ways to clamp some of the pieces of wood so that way the glue had time to dry. Now I've got my hardscape finished, just taking a couple peeks at everything, making sure that the cave still works in the back and everything looks nice and I'm figuring out what kind of detail work I have to do to cover up all the imperfections. And then I've got the first layer of plants all set in place already. This is the Kedigan Boos. It's kind of like a red stem, curly leaves, grows super slow, real light, uh, light tech plant, slow grower. It's gonna be a great foreground plant for the base of this scape. And then I've added in some needle leaf boosts it's kind of a lighter green boost coloration. The light colors in the back, the dark colors up front, really gives that added depth to the aquarium and a different layer. It just gives you more to look at and all around really wraps up this aquascape really nicely. Now for the final detail work, the boost was simply not going to work out for this. So I had to figure out a moss. I went through a couple of different types of mosses in my mind to try and figure out the best one but really they're all kind of just a little bit too big, but I thought maybe it would be nice to do a little bit of rickia and then have some floating and kind of make some like clouds through the mountains of the aquascape. So as it is right now, it definitely needs a good little trimming, but I'm gonna let it grow out as the tank cycles. So that way when it comes to the first trim, I can cut it super nice and low and get it to grow super nice, bushy and thick and not have to worry about it, you know, winding up in places that I don't want it to go. So now that the aquascape is finished, we're gonna fill it up like we always do with 150 TDS water mixed with salty shrimp GH only minerals. We're gonna also add in a little Microbacter 7 to get that bacteria started and the cycle going. And then we're gonna feed that with a little bit of Florin Multi. That's also going to be fertilizer for the plants and get those going as well. So this tank is off to a great start. Now that the tank is filled up, you can tell it's already a little tannined from all the wood inside the aquarium. That's gonna be a little bit of a problem for a while, but after a few water changes, that problem will go away. Now we got the filter on, all the plants are staying in place, all the wood is still sunk. I'd say all around, this was a success. Now let me know in the comments down below if you like it with the light on or with the light off and no cave scene. All right, so now that the tank's been running for a little while, let's go over a couple key components of the aquarium that I might like and maybe not like so much about it. Starting off with the light, I definitely like how powerful it is. 
It's not too strong. It's not going to grow a ton of algae and it'll grow any of the plants that I would want to grow in a shrimp breeding aquarium. We're not talking high tech with a bunch of CO2 or anything like that. So this light is more than enough. However, with the light and lid working together, I do not like it so much because I do have to move the light off to the side in order to get the lid to stand up. And yes, even though the lid kind of wobbles up top, it is sturdy once it's up. I just, I'm a little nervous about it falling over. It hasn't yet, but I wish that the lid and the light could stand up at the same time, but you do have to move it off to the side, not the end of the world, but it is a nice little combo package right there that it comes with the lid and you don't have to worry about the evaporation. Then let's go ahead and talk about the filter. The filter I have pretty much cranked on all the way. I didn't swap out the sponge with the other one like this aquarium, uh, just simply because it's what came with the actual tank kit. I want to run it as it is and see how the baby shrimp population does. So you better believe in the future, we will be doing an update video of this aquarium and see how it's doing with the baby survival rate and whatnot. But I do think that this is a great filter, it's more than powerful enough. There's plenty of beneficial bacteria going in this sponge filter. So overall, I do like the filter. And even though it is powerful, it is quite easy just to turn it down with the little lever in the front of it. So I'm gonna leave it full on the way it is. And uh, overall, the aquarium itself, I do like the look of it. I like that it's sitting up on these little risers and you don't have to worry about a pad underneath. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to get some shrimp inside the aquarium and let it get cycled and see how it does with the baby survival rate. But overall, I do think that this is the best shrimp tank kit, complete kit that I've come across where I'm not gonna have to worry about the shrimp being sucked up in the filter or the filter not being powerful or enough or the light being too powerful. This overall is a really nice, complete shrimp tank kit. If you're looking to get started and want to have the entire package all in one, this is a great start. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. We're going to let this tank run for a little bit before we add the shrimp. However, once the shrimp are added to the aquarium and we get some babies, we will update you on this tank. But till then, enjoy the next video and thanks for watching.